good evening, everyone. Thank you very much for joining us. Hope everybody is safe and well. We will uh, begin our open session this evening by asking for the approval of the agenda. Are there any additions or deletions? Two, two at the bottom. Two at the possible at the bottom, yes, or two at the bottom. I'm sorry. Uh, any disclosures of interest this evening? Hearing none, uh, we have no delegations this evening. So we'll get right into the resolutions. Resolution number 287-20, moved by Councillor Morrill, seconded by Councillor Mullins, that the minutes of the Council and Committee of the Whole meeting held October 13, 2020, be accepted as circulated. All those in favor? Gary, thank you. Resolution number 288-20, moved by Councillor McGrath, seconded by Councillor Stafurek, that the minutes of the special council meeting held October 15, 2020, be accepted as circulated. All those in favor? Carry, thank you. Resolution number 289-20, moved by Councillor Morrill, seconded by Councillor Mullins. That Council accept the quotation from Burmet Contractor Limited in the amount of $6,203 plus applicable taxes to reseal the roof of the Scriber Public Library. All those in favor? Carried. Thank you. Number 290-20, moved by Councillor Mullen, seconded by Councillor McGrath. The Council accept the quotation from Burmet Contracting Limited in the amount of $2,360 plus applicable taxes to repair the main drain and steel around a rooftop unit on the community hall. All those in favor? Carry, thank you. Resolution number 291-20, moved by Councillor Stafira, seconded by Councillor Mullins. The Council accept the quotation from Valentino Trucking in the amount of $10.75 per tonne, plus applicable taxes for the supply and delivery of 800 tonnes of winter sand and the rental of the stack. All those in favor? Harry, thank you. Resolution number 293-20, moved by Councillor McGrath, seconded by Councillor Stafiric. The Council approves the purchase of one 
FLIRK2 infrared thermal imaging camera from 1200 Darch Fire in the amount of $1,750 plus applicable taxes and freight. All those in favor? Okay, thank you. Resolution number 293-20, moved by Councillor Stafira, seconded by Councillor Morrow, that the Council approve the purchase of one gas detector calibration system from ABC Fire and Safety Equipment Limited in the amount of $3,006.16 plus applicable taxes and freight. All those in favor? Carried. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, yeah. Yeah. this uh, gas detector calibration system is uh, going to serve its purpose at what facility, sir? What's the fire department? The fire department. Directly the fire department? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> Uh, resolution number 294-20, moved by Councillor Mullen, seconded by Councillor McGrath. The Council approved the purchase of two oxygen airway medical bags from FireTech Manufacturing Limited in the amount of $1,291 plus applicable taxes and freight. All those in favor? Carry. Thank you. Resolution number 295-20, moved by Councillor Mullins, seconded by Councillor Safira. That bylaw 39-2020, being a bylaw under the provisions of section 34 of the Planning Act, RSO 1990, <coughs> to amend zoning bylaw 20-2014 as amended, of the corporation of the township subscriber to assist existing lots of record with lesser lot area and or frontage than required by the zoning bylaw to increase in size, be given first, second, third, and final reading and enacted. All those in favor? Carry, thank you. Resolution number 296-20, moved by Councillor Morrill, seconded by Councillor McGrath. The Council adopt the Township Subscriber Organization Chart as presented. All those in favor? Um. <clears throat> Question, Councillor, yes? Yeah, uh, is, this isn't the way, is, is this the way it's set up now? Like, I mean, we got a community economic development manager, but we don't have a 
community economic development coordinator or do we have yeah uh, the, we don't have an intern either yeah the positions aren't what you say filled per se but uh that's just uh, there in, in, in terms of showing the relationship of the former position to the uh, newer position, so to speak. So um, everything is it is in there in terms of uh, uh, just from a perspective of HR, in terms of uh, delineating where the positions would be along that line. So there could be some circumstances where, you know, um, if we get an intern, we might have a CD intern. And if it can be uh, uh, transitioned past the intern stage, you know, we can look at it into the CD coordinator position. And just to, again, match the skill set of the individual at the CD department at the uh, at a uh, uh, likely time, either present or in the future, if that makes sense. So nothing else has changed here it's all the people that reported to supervisors it's the same uh, what I helped clarify here was uh, just the designation of uh, director level uh, managers and management level managers so I just uh, wanted to clarify that um, prior to that there had been some ambiguity in our organization chart so we only have the one director no, there should be two directors. One we director. Have treasurer. treasurer and the director of operations would be director level position. Okay, right. And yeah, I may, uh, I, I think that um, although all positions might not be filled, right, you don't want to delete them from the organizational chart um, at this time. Uh, we, I believe we would like to uh, fill these positions at a future date uh, but for the meantime let's just leave things as they are even though the position is not filled yeah I like it's pretty clear who who reports to who so <laughs> exactly yeah, looks good so uh, if I may then I'll go through it again resolution number 296-20 moved by councillor Morrow seconded by councillor McGrath Council adopt the Township of Scriber organization chart as presented. All those in favor? Carried. Okay, thank you. time that brings a close to the council portion of the meeting we move on to the committee of the whole with department reports and uh, to any board minutes we'll start off with the treasurer report are there any questions Again, there's quite a difference this year because there's been no travel yeah, exactly uh, hearing no questions then we'll move on to uh, treasure report number two public skating feasibility report here we have the uh, staff recommendation to not offer public skating for the 2020-2021 uh, arena season due to COVID-19 protocols. Any questions on that? Um, because I'm sure we're going to get some from the community. How much, how much ice time is going to be utilized by whomever, the, the hockey or figure skating? Or, is there a ballpark figure on that? Yeah, right, we had that uh, uh, day of the schedule on your phone. It hadn't, cha it hadn't changed from last year or anything like that. The only thing that's changed uh, was there'd be no tournaments, of course. Right. But, um, and we're not sure, we're not, not sure about the uh, um, Fallen Rock, uh, the Junior B League yeah. yet. But the 
rest of the, the uh, subscriber tears for the minor hockey and plane swallowing rock, it looks like they're... I haven't seen how it is, but it was pretty much the same as last year. With the other two exactly. Okay. Except for the, obviously, all the open ice. <clears throat> Yeah, I was when I was talking about public skating, I wasn't um, I wasn't talking about fourteen hours. Like I think that's including shinny and everything. I was talking maybe two hours of public skating per per week, like um, wherever it fit in. I'm not even sure where it fit in. I understand. Uh, I understand. Um, where the COVID-19 stuff is coming from too, but and, and, and that's okay. But uh, if the schools, like say in the afternoons and all that, and it, it, it gets a little better and the schools um, start to venture out a little bit, and I don't know if they will or not, would the ice be, would they be able to rent the ice per classroom say? Uh, like not mixing up the classrooms. <laughs> Dave said no. <laughs> I don't think something like that is in the works anytime soon. No, I don't think so. Either. We can't even use our own room. It's it's <laughs> it's, yeah. it's, it's such a uh, what do you say uh, difficult situation. And again, this is again a recommendation at this point in time. This is something that's changing based on the count of cases. Uh, and like like I said, if if this wave that's hitting you know southern Ontario ever does make its way up north, we would be again you know looking very closely at what we're planning on reopening you know and so um, again this recommendation was put forward to the situation regarding COVID nineteen right now and uh, as things move forward. Maybe the numbers of cases will be dropping in Southern Ontario. It may be something we can revisit. The provincial government may also, uh, uh, what do you say, remove that rule in order to have a uh, supervisor present, right? So there are a lot of factors to uh, consider. And again, this is a recommendation at just this point in time. Maybe uh, it's one of these things where we open up the arena and see how things are going. And it's an idea we could revisit again. Uh, it's hard to say when we're again uh, making these decisions because you want to provide a balance between the safety for residents and staff and at the same time you want to allow those uh, civic enjoyments to continue that we have so um, finding that balance sometimes you need to hear feedback from the community and especially the people who enjoy uh, using maybe that uh, public skating time and that could also help factor in as we go. So maybe it's something we uh, revisit once we open the arena mid-November. At this point in time, like you said, as a recommendation, could we re yeah. revisit that at our next meeting? What are the, yeah. what are the shifts for the two guys at the rec set? And what are their, what are they work? 30 to 4 and the village is still using this variable shift. So who's the, who's doing the nighttime when the arena is open? Nighttime would be four to be Josh. So be four to whenever? Uh, it's two to ten generally. Two to ten? Or to be adjusted to three to eleven. Yeah. So if, given the situation, it does vary a little bit. Yeah. My my only suggestion would be like if you want to do it once or twice a week, could you not do it at like a four o'clock or a five o'clock time slot? Because then you know you have a staff there, and there's no user groups there, according to the. To the schedule. That, that would be my only suggestion to look at. It's so difficult for us to dedicate like a staff member. They want that staff member on the ice there, you know, mm -hmm. looking. No, that's what I'm saying. Room. Like, because then the two guys would overlap, so you yep. could still have someone right. at the rec center. If you did it, sorry, not at four or five. I guess you'd have to do it at two. To have the public two skate two, right. between two and four. Yep. So then you know you have two staff. Right. That would be my only thing if you guys want to look at that. That's all. All right. I think we should. I think we should uh, explore every opportunity. Mm -hmm. And I guess at this time I'll ask what about the uh, outdoor rink? Is 
there any consideration of putting ice on the outdoor rink? No, no consideration of putting ice on the rink. It's uh, the board's been considerable amount of work and it wasn't taken into account for budgeting purposes. Okay. It could become a, a relatively busy place. Oh, for that's the other thing. Of the state. Yeah. <clears throat> and, and you are outdoors. Yeah. Uh, so <clears throat> that a big mixture of adults and children. Children. Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, it's been a few years, but it's <laughs> worth looking into. Well, that's kind of what you're trying to avoid, too, is right? Mixing yeah. up. Yes, the, exactly, but yeah. The older population and the younger population. But an outdoor event is. Yeah, it's a little different. Yeah, it's a little exactly. different, but still. The problem, the problem with the outdoor rink is that you would have uh, an uncontrolled yes. crowd yeah. versus the arena, you would have a somewhat controlled crowd. That's right. Yeah. Well, just a question. No, for yeah. sure. I've thought of it all. <laughs> yeah, we'll uh, revisit the arena thing uh, at our next meeting, I suppose. If that's all right. I think it would be good to also be given some time for when the arena opens. Maybe the second meeting in November would be a good time. I'm yeah. sure you get feedback. Yeah, for public. sure. Yeah. yeah, see where we're sitting with the case this week. Yeah. Okay. What kind of numbers did you people you get? It? What kind of numbers would you get out at that time period? I don't. I, you're not going to get the kids. Right? You're not going to get the no. kids. So I don't know what what you would if you picked a time like if we if you picked a, a two hour time from six to eight or something. I don't know what the numbers would be like in a, a lesser COVID time. I'd say. Yeah, it might, I mean, it's probably be, in the report. Probably be lots of room to self distance. Pardon me. I say there'd probably be lots of room. To self distance on yeah. the ice. And so we're less than 10 normal yeah. consistent. So, yeah, something to revisit for sure. Uh, definitely. And uh, not, well. not just the fact that uh, <laughs> you, I think we have to have somebody supervising it. You know, understand you can self distance and do all the rest of it, but unless there's actually somebody there to oversee that, to make sure it's happening. Yeah, we'd have to hire probably somebody to to uh, to do it for two hours a week, not fourteen. Well, that's what I'm suggesting. The only time would be when they overlap, so you don't have to hire someone else. Right. Yes. So we're going to make our yeah. taxpayers pay more for five people to escape. Yeah. So that doesn't make sense to me. Yeah. So uh, we have some thinking to do, and we'll bring it back at the next meeting. And, uh, in the meantime, I guess we'll get some input from uh, the community and see uh, what happens. Okay? Yeah. Then we'll move on to the Director of Operations report. Any questions for uh, Red? The dam, looking at the Cook Lake Dam, what, how often is that checked? Is that a yearly? Is that checked yearly, or mm. how do you know that it needs repairs, or what kind of? Yeah, what spring, are we looking at there? Spring, spring, spring and fall. Yeah. And uh, public works do go up there and look after that. And it was brought to my attention that the uh, dam has been having some problems with the uh, cement concrete breaking off. Right. So I went up and had a look, and I called uh, Concrete Wall to come and have a look at it when they get a chance, and they yeah. have not been here yet. The work on the ice plant isn't going to set us back, is it? Set us back. In terms of when will the ice can go in? So the ice is going. It's going? We're okay. just about ready to put white paint on. Okay, there, right so. on. Yeah, so we should be able to get with that. Certainly, the cement on the dam has got to be a, a bit of a concern, right? Yeah, so it's up there. Look, it's, we can get by for a year or so, but it wants somebody to have to look at it. Okay, thanks, Rick. Thanks. How's the... Uh, any other questions? Yeah, go ahead. The Ontario Street situation. When I last I was talking to you, they, since you've done the unilateral flushing, 
Yes. Is there one one faint sense? And he has the homeowner just start to flush their line and they didn't call back, so I guess it cleans up that day. That was at the end of the highway. At the highway end, right? Okay. So the um the West Ontario is holding its own, whatever? Yes. We got two complaints. Once when they did the spring flushing and then again when they did the water uh, mains. Okay. Does the loader have to go back again? Or is no. that part just coming here and it's getting done here? No, the part's coming here. Oh, how did those guys not notice that? Well, that's the same question that uh, Pug Works Fund asked. Yeah, it's like, how does that, how do you do all this work and not notice something else is broken? Considering when he was telling me about it, he was sitting in the hot tub, I could smell the air for that ready. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. Okay. Any other questions for Red? On to item four, accessibility advisory committee meeting minutes. This is a uh, good first meeting for the accessibility committee. This was something that we wanted to, to happen sooner, but uh, after COVID-19 hit, this was something that we were, had postponed again in terms of uh, looking at all our operations and procedures, but. Uh, Ultimately, this uh, uh, meeting did have to happen as it was uh, statutory again in terms of uh, meeting uh, the AODA requirements. So, I ended up at this meeting, Dave, um, and then we did a bit of a tour. We went to a few buildings and whatnot. Mm -hmm. um, so, I don't know why my name is not on there. Cool. From where there, whether it's I just, your name, so. it's on there. It's on the minutes. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Where did I see that? Right at the bottom. Where that? There's a space, and then you're in there's a space. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. We wanted you to stand out. <laughs> you're under oh, the ring. On the minutes, uh, accessibility. Uh, okay, I think you're looking at the accessibility plan. I Doug. Could be. Yeah, number four on the. the yeah, number five, Doug. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> You say you just happen to end up there? Or? No, you think he wants his he wants his name put in. No, oh, Dave and I got together on that, and uh, okay, he's busy yeah. enough, so yeah, I asked Doug to hold Evan up and go. I see what you're saying, Doug. We need to put your name on the accessibility advisory committee on the accessibility plan. Yeah. That we can get updated. I was looking at something different, so I carry on. <clears throat> Well, then the next is the uh, accessibility plan. Uh, are there any questions on that? Uh, it is very good to see that we finally got the uh, committee underway. Mm -hmm. And uh, it is certainly something that we, we need. Mm -hmm. And I would like to thank uh, those who uh, volunteered on this committee because it is very important to our community. Yeah, they've done a lot of work. I mean, they've identified a lot yeah, of things. Lot, so. Yeah, yeah. In the amount of time, they certainly yeah. have mm -hmm. a lot of work involved for sure. Vision and mission statement and everything that's very good. Very good. Any questions about that, then? Yeah. So the recommendation here would be for uh, uh, council to adopt the accessibility plan presented here. Of course, we're going to have to do a bit of fixes to point it out, Doug. Mm -hmm. But uh, to make sure we get it. We uh, make sure we get that touched up for the final document. Do we have any concerns on this plan? Uh, are we ready to adopt it? All those in favor? Thank you. And uh, thank you again to the advisory committee for the accessibility. Uh, certainly appreciate your time and effort. All right, so next up we have uh, Scriber Public Library minutes. 
three years. Any questions on that? Any comments, uh, Councillor Morrow? Uh, no, it wasn't at this one. We just had one in October and it okay. all is going well at the library. Really Still trying to do as you. much as they can yeah. within the restrictions, you know? For sure. And the media center has a website now? Or? Uh, no, I'll go with that. So, name, name you unofficial. <laughs> Stuff that's been up over where I read that somewhere. Any other questions about the, those minutes? So we'll move into number seven, the aqua meeting schedule. This again is um, just a uh, it's an update. Uh, terms of what uh, Aqua wants to do in terms of meetings. Again, the timelines are just rough estimates. It, it could change based on, uh, they aren't necessarily set in stone, but the uh, topics are what's important. We're expecting uh, Aqua to come uh, do a presentation of this optimization study that has been going on uh, this year. So uh, they're ready to present the results. Um, that should be at our next council meeting. Uh, the other thing there is um, they are moving towards uh, uh, quarterly uh, in-person updates for the uh, water and wastewater operations. So um, that again, uh, you'll have the opportunity to again discuss with uh, Patrick and Joanna uh, any sort of questions as uh, uh, you may have over uh, the year. Well, I think that's something that the council has requested. Yeah. Right? That, yeah. Uh, we meet a little more often and yep. uh, get uh, person updates. Uh, no, so, that's good to see. Yeah. I think everybody's fine with that. Uh, question period. Are there any questions sent in over? You have no questions. Any questions from people present here? Uh, okay, we'll move into uh, communications. Anything stands out that you would like to speak to? Yes, uh, the addition at the bottom, uh, Remembrance Day ceremonies. Uh, there was a, a letter from the, the Legion requesting uh, our assistance. At the Cenotaph, they would like to have uh, three councillors uh, to help raise and lower the flags and, uh, and someone to uh, lay the wreath on behalf of the, the township. I am available that day. Um, I guess I'm asking for three councillors to uh, are available to help. Good. Okay, I'm uh, sorry. Councillor McGrath, Stafiric, and Mullins. Yeah. And uh, Morrow, apparently. <laughs> I'm We're standing in Periscope. Um, so, could we uh, send a reply to uh, Mr. Marsh? Yeah. They're that? also asking for the area to be, be barricaded. Yes. Are you aware of that, uh, Red? Yes, I already sent the information to it. Okay, thank you very much. So, we have that covered then? Thank you. Uh, any other questions under uh, communications? Then we'll move into the unfinished business. Uh, Aqua's uh, draft agreement. And uh, my recommendation here is that council enter into uh, engineering procurement and construction management agreement with Aqua for wastewater treatment plant upgrades at the cost of one million one hundred sixty-five thousand eight hundred and seventeen dollars plus applicable taxes. 
and this is a uh, significant sum of money, but uh, something that uh, in, in terms of compliance, as we uh, met in the presentation with Aqua, is very much necessary, as well as again, uh, in terms of uh, fixing up a lot of uh, uh, just the infrastructure again at that, uh, uh, our wastewater plant. It certainly is a, a scary proposition as far as uh, the money that's involved. Uh, I don't know if we have much choice, but we are going to start lobbying very heavily with our provincial and federal counterparts to uh, certainly help us out to any extent that they can. Yeah. Because uh, it is, uh, you know, it's very important. There's nothing more important than our water or sewer. Um, but any questions on that? I guess we proceed with the law of but um, yes, our lobbying will find some results. But as you say, it's, it's like we don't have a choice. It's a compliance thing, right? Right. <coughs> sure. So it's um, plus. Plus, there are a lot of issues that need to be fixed. So, either pay now or pay later. Like, there must be a, a fair number of other communities that basically are the same boat. That's true. Yes, uh, I believe so. Yeah. You know, <clears throat> smaller, same size or smaller, but uh, like, uh, so <laughs> we won't be on our own with our. With no, the sure. and, and, that. and I don't believe the size of the community actually matters it's how old your infrastructure is sure and ours is 40 years old <clears throat> and a lot of other communities are facing that it's the age yeah. uh, of the facility right. and now it has to be updated yeah. i mean and that's the thing is the focus has always been on drinking water for so long and uh yeah. <clears throat> wastewater has always been you know an afterthought to that so the condition that it is right now, it's uh, the, just the whole plant. We were hearing again about the electrical, yeah. you know, and, 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 and what shape it is in now. It's uh, this is all something that has to be addressed with this project as well. Yeah, we've been hearing about this all year, so yes, yeah, it's time to do something about it. And you <coughs> priority set. Yeah. <coughs> well, we got. We've already put in for for one grant, and it's been we were turned down on it too. I mean, yeah. so so we and we got to gotta, we got to keep pursuing it. And we have to revisit that for sure. Like I say, get into uh, and more and more of uh, it's not something something that the government is putting on us. So that's right. It was so the lobbying needs to continue big time. So everybody's okay with uh, moving into that draft agreement. I'm good with that. Okay, <coughs> then we'll move on from there. Uh, so the other business and uh, the Roma Conference. Yeah. Oh, sorry, Microsoft Golf Club. We had a delegation at our last meeting. Uh, requesting our help, monetary help, uh, to the club. Very good presentation from uh, President Bob Spadoni and uh, Executive Member Art Hiller. Uh, do we have any feelings at this time as to how you want to uh, move on from here? Uh, are we in favor of uh, helping them out and uh, to what extent? I'm in favor of helping them. I'm not sure to what extent, but I'd like to explore some options. Anybody else? I think if we can provide some seed money, seed uh, funding for them, mm -hmm. if, uh, it's almost good if you 
you can provide dollars and then to get more dollars. Right. I mean, that's what we do here, right? Yeah, so we do all the time, and, and a lot of other organizations do the same thing. You know, they're looking for money elsewhere, but they need some funding to start. Right. And uh, I think we we could probably possibly help them out that way. So, and, and this. That's about that's about the only way. Well, because, you know, this this donation here, if that doesn't lead up to something else following it from yeah. from the government, then uh, I don't know. Yeah. I'm, Strictly for operations, it's a hard sell. Absolutely. And if it's a yearly request, then it's even harder. But there may be some some opportunities here to go for. Yeah. Um, my thought is, uh, I don't know if we can kind of worry about next year or the year after. Um, if we can do something this year, then it would be. You know, like help precedent. I don't know how else to put it, but we would have to revisit it every year. Uh, but your feelings, you know, do we look at, do we want to uh, help promote? And I guess the next question is going to be to what extent? I mean, if we look at our, our council remuneration report, one person not going to Roma is a decent donation to to them. Good point. The Roma, you're talking that that didn't happen or isn't going to. Yeah, if you look at how much it costs to send <clears throat> send everyone last year. I'm not saying that whole sum of money, but there's money saved there. Okay. Any other feelings? What's that? What's that? Um, um, fund that we have at the end of the year. Remember? Uh, um, Grant aid. Grant aid. They don't qualify. The the I believe. What's in it? Six. Six. I, mean, I, I, I was thinking of maybe taking five hundred out of it or a thousand out of it to help with their scorecards or something, if that was possible. I don't know. Does that? Because let's be. Let's. Uh, Let's be careful here, because the curling club in Terrace Bay is going to ask for some money. I know my beautification committee is going to ask for money. Um, lots of people are listening, and they're going to be asking for money. We're struggling. We're struggling. I would love to help them out if we we're sitting better, but. We're struggling in our town, trying to get, we're trying, I mean, got the exact guy that spoke on it. We're trying to do a little park up at Walker's Lake. We can't, we're having issues with it. And we want to give some money to, I know it's not Terrace Bay, it's the, it's the golf club, but we, in saying that, we got to be careful what we do because there's going to be other organizations asking. Do we want to make a decision this evening, or because at some point in time it, it's got to come to uh, yay or nay? You know, and, and if we want to support them, uh, how much? And if we don't want to support them. We need to, an explanation as to why, and I believe that we certainly do have to communicate to them one way or the other. Oh, definitely. If we do or if we don't, and uh, our reasons for uh, you know, for either one. Next meeting, okay? I'm fine meeting. with that. I, you know, I'm not sure. Vote, vote now. Yeah. Whether to proceed or not, otherwise. 
to kind of the same conversation that meeting. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm not saying I'm not in favor of it if if this donation is going to uh, create some more funding to make make that possible. But just for us to make a, a straight small donation, um, I, I'm not in favor of it. Uh, I'm a little concerned about the donation, the straight out donation, uh, right to Kevin's point, that it's going to open up the door for further requests. And to be fair, how can you say yes to one and no to others? I mean, what further requests would be coming? Well, that, that could be coming from other organizations in the community. Or both communities. So I believe but in the community they can apply to the grant and aid process. Out of the community, every other entity in Terrace Bay is ran by Terrace Bay. It's not a standalone organization like they are. That's just my idea. I don't think that necessarily opens up the curling club asking us for money. Terrace Bay Township runs the curling club. Well, we don't know that. No, I know. I guess we don't know that. I mean, some people, on? some people have the, their opinion is that they say, but when people come here to this area to golf, right? right. And, and maybe they stay here in a motel, maybe they don't. I don't know. But, I mean, I, I'd like to compare that to how many people come here during the course of the summer and spend time on this hiking trail. I would say there'd be a lot more people doing that. In fact, there's no doubt about that. But we, Scriber or Terrace Bay does not give the Cask Isle Hiking Trail any donation. You know, like like we have in the past. But um, so <clears throat> that's just another activity that involves people coming to the area. You know, so it's a it's a thought. Well, we did support the Cask Isle. Well, it wasn't it? it was Over here, it, that, yeah. It, it was a, it was a township incentive. I the mean, A6 project. Casco was involved with it. I mean, yeah. it was. And they, so they, was the Voyager Trail. They had the idea, but it was it was seed money. <clears throat> like for five thousand yeah. dollars, what did we get for that? A hundred thousand. Yes, basically a uh, hundred thousand. So twenty times your your investment is, is the money you got. Very much it's a project, very centralized describer. This is again a trail literally in right. describer. And administered by a scriber and, and, and so on. So I mean what uh, what have we done in the past in, uh, in the past? Uh, from my understanding we've given them five hundred dollars for um, something to do with scorecards or whatever. I think that's like a master's. Uh, yeah, I don't. I don't know. Yeah, well, that's another point. Are there any precedents for this type of request that we know? Of? Well, we, you know, we certainly have donated something over the years, but um, well, they said in their presentation sure. that they've asked and yeah. got nothing. I mean, they're, they're uh, like a, like the question I asked is, they're running it like a business. They're 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 eligible for all these. They're eligible for all these grants that, um, and like COVID is is screwing up their business too. So they're eligible for them grants that that are out there, and they're getting some of them. And so you're, you're, I mean, and Dave. Dave Dave has made a good point over and over. Like a lot of businesses have gotten the the grants and the accessibility to get grants or get uh, money from the government, and the municipality has, has just gotten theirs not long ago. And uh, this COVID's been going on for a bit, so I mean, we got a lot of we. <laughs> We got a lot of irons in the fire here, and I, I, I think we got to tread water slowly. That's just my opinion. I, I have nothing against uh, giving them money for whatever we do for 500 bucks for scorecards or whatever. 
Um, I just thought I, we're not in a position to be giving too much money out, whether it's to whatever. That's just my, that's just my take on it. Well, I think we should try and settle it this evening if we can. Uh, who's in favor of the, of a donation of say five hundred dollars if that's what we have given in the past? Councilor Moore is in favor. Anybody else? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. What 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 it would lead to, I don't know, but well, that, that part we don't know. You know but uh, anybody else's feelings? We have two. So we decided on the monetary amount right now. Are you saying five hundred bucks? Well, no, I would. Uh, <laughs> well, or are we just going to vote? Do you want to give them money? Okay, let's do it that way. Then. Do you want to give them any money? Those in favor? <clears throat> I, you got to limit it, like. Well, we're not asking for amount. We're just asking, are you in favor? Like, and, and that's not very clear either. Like, <laughs> are, are you in the money for? Yeah, in terms of, yeah. to to operate their their business or their. Well, they, they've requested or a certain amount of uh, donations. So the, donation. the motion move right now is, are you in favor of contributing some amount of money? And then I guess the follow up will be then if that is passed to decide how much that you want to uh, donate at that point. But there should be at least uh, an agreement for at least three councillors on whether you want to donate any monetary uh, sum at all versus none in terms of the first decision and then it would be again uh, open to debate if that passes as to how much and oh, are there conditions would there be conditions attached to that you could you could put conditions but again conditions i don't, I don't think uh, make it if we to, if we decide to donate to any organization i don't think we put conditions on it yeah, if we put conditions, it becomes like a contract, right? Yeah. We'd have to follow up on uh, yeah, no. on getting proof of how it was spent and all of that, right? So, well, I mean, I already discussed my point of view on you know why you would donate money to to an organization. So, uh, I mean, that would put a condition on on why you would donate money. So, I guess. Uh, or the reasoning behind it. So, do you want to move that motion again? Yeah, I, I guess I'll ask the question again. Those who are in favor, in favor of uh, a donation to the golf club. I'm, I'm going to say, depending on the on the on the value. If I can, if I can. No, uh, at this point in time, Doug, I don't think you can. We're just asking if you, uh, if you're in favor of a donation to the golf club, mm -hmm. and then yay or nay, then we'll decide, uh, you know, how much. Yeah, you can always say no later on to the amount of money. <clears throat> okay, we'll look at it. I guess. So we have two for and two against. And I will say, uh, I would like to uh, agree with the donation, and we will discuss how much that donation will be. Do you want to move the motion of this meeting for the amount, or do you want to think about it? No, I think we should move it. Uh, I think everybody should have. Or do we want to move an amount and then we will discuss it at the next meeting? Bring back the resolution. Bring back the resolution. 
that the next meeting then. So uh, the amount moved would be what we've done in the past is $500. Is that right? And then we will uh, bring it to the next meeting and unless there are there more concerns. I think, we, I think based on that presentation, they're not looking for a smaller amount of money. I know that's not small, but I, I was thinking a little bit more than that. I know they originally asked for 5000 5, I don't know if that's feasible, but I think something between 1000 and 5000 is what I was more in line with. But that's just me. No, uh, that's uh, that's fine. Uh, I'm thinking that uh, in my uh, years here, the, the largest amount I believe we've ever given was to the uh, Harvest Food Company. And that was in the amount of... That's uh, a grand name. That's a grand name. Over the years, uh, we simply don't have the kind of money that uh, some people request. I don't think we should need to apologize for that. It's that uh, we want to try and help everyone, but when the monetary request is um, extreme or however you want to put it, it puts us in a that situation, we certainly, I believe, we want to help out everyone. Uh, but we do have to be careful as to what we what we do give. Um, but I will reiterate, I would like to give something to them, uh, and I will suggest five hundred dollars, and then. Uh, you want to think on that and we'll bring it back to the next meeting. That's uh, up to council. I agree with 500. Yeah, we could bring it back. Bring it back to the next meeting. Yeah, does that mean every question? Yes, unless you want to agree to it tonight or think on it and we'll bring it back to the next meeting. Wouldn't hurt to think on it. Okay. Then we'll put that on the next <coughs> agenda then. Okay. Alright. And our uh, next up is the Roma 2021 virtual conference. This is uh, costs us four hundred dollars per member. And Cecile, that's uh, for each council member, right? Yep. For each? Pardon? For each council member, it'll be. It'll be the same as Amy. It'll be per per person registered. I I uh, <clears throat> I don't think we have a choice but to uh, to uh, um, Nathan. Uh, your name and Dave's, uh, Dave's name and maybe one other name. Um, if I'm willing to put my name in. I don't think we have a choice. We got to uh, start. I mean, we're going to lobby before that, but I think we got to try and get some uh, meetings with some ministers and get some money here. And this is the opportunity, hopefully, to have a, a meeting with the minister, at least the PA. Where's, where's the date? January. That's the Roma one, Doug, in Toronto, or uh, in January. January 25th and 26th. Yeah. January was a tough. Yeah. Apparently, definitely, like you say, Dave, lobby before then, but yeah, like this is an opportunity. I think definitely you and Nathan, I'm willing to sit sit on it too, but every person that sits on it is another 400 bucks, so it's a decision we'll have to make. I do agree we need to uh, have at least a couple uh, well, representatives from our municipality to uh, 
I'll set this one out. The ministers will be here virtually? Uh, that part yes. we don't know for sure. They, they say they will be, but then, you know, yeah, it's always a practice. there's always at the last minute, it could be just a parliamentary assistant. But uh, regardless, I think we do have to put our yeah, case forward. Either way, they, you do have those yes. delegation yeah. opportunities. We will request okay. them, and then we will hear before that yep. as to who we, like we may ask for three or four delegations, we might only get two. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's not that. Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, you know how it works. Yeah, I agree with you. Yeah, I agree. We've got to let, let, know, uh, let everyone know we're still out there. That's right. And we need help. Yeah. Keep everything going there. So everybody's in agreement with that then, that we'll pursue the virtual conference and... Uh, yep. Or register again? Yes, well, we'll, we'll, at least for now, we'll register Nathan and myself. Yep. Okay. Everybody all okay with that? Yep. Yep. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> then I guess next up is... 297. Resolution number 297-20, moved by Councillor Stafir, second by Councillor Mullins, that the meeting now adjourn at 8.02 p.m. All those in favor? Carried, thank you.